Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now it says, as Jesus said in the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age, which is known as the end of the age of grace. Amen. The end of the age of grace. In other words, no more help from God. You got to do it on your own. Come on. That's why they might be known the end of the age will come. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. He said, You are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Then all these are the beginning of sorrows. Again, the end of the ages of the end of grace, his redemption plan comes to an end. Mankind must fend for themselves. That's not a good thing. It talks about wars and rumors of wars. There's something I want to share about tonight because the Holy Spirit has just been revealing some things that uh, we have to have an understanding and be prepared for. The wars and rumors of wars, which we hear of wars, there's wars going on all the time, and then there's rumors of wars. But there, there are wars of realities. So we're going to say war, wars of reality. Wars of wars of reality. reality. So there's a war going on over reality. So you have dimensional realities. And in these realities, there's a war going on. And the enemy's always trying to bring a false reality, which we've talked about before. And God is trying to bring the true reality. That's why Jesus came. He came to break through the, and create the true reality of eternity. That's why he said, pray, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But there are things that had to be prepared for this. So in other words, nothing happens without prayer. But he tells his disciples, pray about that. Pray, pray then. Here's the prayer. Here's what all mankind can pray. What was God preparing? He was preparing for a rip and a veil to bring the true reality here. In Revelation chapter 12. So there's wars of reality. There's a war over truth. And lie. Again, this is how the enemy enslaves individuals by creating a false reality. Amen. Addiction is a false reality. It may seem real to you. You know, I keep seeing on TV all these programs and whatever. Oh, addiction is a disease. I don't want to slap them in the head. Addiction is a demon. Amen. See, they don't have that reality because they're blinded to it. People that smoke cigarettes, it's the spirit of nicotine. Even when they chew tobacco, it's still the spirit of nicotine. We do not fight flesh and blood. God told us that. We fight against powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, demons, devils, fallen angels, and false realities that carry. That's their purpose, is to bring a reality to enslave humanity. And he doesn't care who you are. The devil, the devil doesn't care whether you're saved or unsaved. In Revelation 12, 7. Let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil, and Satan. Who deceives the whole world? Is he still doing it? Yes. Yeah, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, his power is fear. Mm -hmm. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ has come. 
For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe, W-O-E, without eternity, to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a what? A short time. A short time. A short time. <coughs> so Satan's, Satan and his corrupt angels were cast out of the third dimensional reality. Which in that reality is where God's dwelling is. They were cast into the second dimensional reality. Moving in and out of the first and second realities. So we have dimensions. In other words, they move in and out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're interdimensional beings. Everyone say that with me. Interdimensional, interdimensional beings. beings. The first dimensional realities are born against the seed of God in this first dimensional reality, which is what you see all around here. Enslaving them in a false reality so they don't make it home. If anybody's ever seen The Matrix, that explains it tremendously. You know, it's good to watch it over and over and over again until you get it. But it's pretty powerful because with them there was two realities, you know. In Matthew 27, hallelujah, in verse 15. And Jesus was on the cross and he cried out with a loud voice and yield of his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple tore in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were opened and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Again, the third dimensional reality of God was manifested as a testimony against the deceptions and fear of false realities. Why? No one ever rose from the dead. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, I think a lot of people freaked out. It was probably the greatest salvation of the day. Pray forever. What a harvest. But, you know, people saw their families that had died during Jesus' ministry that rose from the dead and began to give testimony of who Jesus is, what he's done. So something happened when Jesus was on the cross. He ripped the veil of the temple. Amen. And by ripping the veil of the temple, he opened up the third dimensional reality to come into the first reality. Does everybody understand that? The eternal reality to access. He also made it so that it would be an eternal port. It's a portal for mankind to come home. That portal was established when the Lord asked Moses to make a tabernacle. There's three chambers to the tabernacle, just like there's three dimensional realities. There's the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. So when you get saved, you enter into the holy place, the um, outer court. Anything out of the eternal part is outer darkness. So if you're living out of the tabernacle, you're living in outer darkness. Mm -hmm. And you can't make it home then. Amen? So what the enemy tries to do is each chamber of the tabernacle, the first chamber is associated with salvation, the second chamber is associated with priesthood. So when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you, you have access not only to, you should be living in the second chamber, but also the, the third chamber is the most holy place, which represents warrior, your kingship. And, and in this, that's why God, he didn't ask 
it was a command to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a command. Why? Because he wanted us to live in the second chamber with access to the third chamber. Does everybody understand that? But you must fulfill priesthood. Because we are called to be priests and kings. And a priest ministers to the Lord. That's why we worship him. We minister to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 14... So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than any and every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go. So that he was upright, wasn't he? All the days of your life. But I will put enmity, hatred, between you and the woman. Who was the woman? Eve. He put hatred between both of them. And between your seed and her seed, in other words, their offsprings, their, uh, their line of generations. And he will bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. And so the woman, he said, and I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Now that's pretty intense. Why would God bring such a judgment on the woman? Because she had intercourse with the serpent and produced children. Does everybody understand that? Amen. She didn't, they didn't commit sin by taking a fruit off of a tree. A tree represents spirit. Amen? So this began a seed war between the serpent and Christ. So now, so in the seed war that we're in, we're not only in a sea war, but we're in a reality. Reality war. Why? Because God, the devil's trying to prevent the seeds from growing and going home. This is a war. It's the only way the devil can defeat. He only can defeat by deception. The uh, Democratic Party can only win a, uh, an office by cheating. Same thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Democratic Party, sorry. They gotta cheat. They gotta cause false flags. They gotta do everything they can. Why? Because they're anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. First John chapter three verse seven. Little children, that no one what is he deceive you? He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So by destroying the works of the enemy, you expose them. Amen. And then one of the things that Jesus did is, of course, he went, hung on a cross, paid the price, and bought everybody back through his, his price of sacrifice, through his blood. Then he went into hell and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the devil. He dismantled him and took away his authority. So the only authority now that he has is what you give him. Amen. He doesn't have authority over us anymore. Only what you give him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, glory. Amen. And so many people give him authority. Mm -hmm. Whoever has been and again, verse eight: He who sins is of the, is of the for see, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil's sin from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Amen. <laughs> it's a righteous seed of. God, born again of the Spirit. The seed is actually the seed of the Spirit of God that's in me and you. That's your spirit now. Your spirit is now your new creation. Your new spirit is the seed of God. So the media is one of the greatest 
avenues that the enemy uses to bring deception. Yep. TV, music. How many people are, are so caught up in music, secular music, that brings them deception? How many people watch the halftime of the Super Bowl game? It's a false reality. What are they? They're releasing a message to impart and connect. See, anybody that agrees with what they're doing would receive a spirit. Same thing with music. When before we got saved, we'd be singing all these things and not even realize the lyrics we were singing. I'll never forget the Rolling Stones songs. I thought it was the greatest song. Guess my name. Hmm. <laughs> well, what was his name? He kept saying, Guess my name. His, the name you were supposed to guess was Satan. Yeah. See, there's so many things that we never realized that we were agreeing with and it was open under. When they take the music, all the music that they produce, they put it into a uh, sanctuary of theirs, an occult location. And they have witches all around them. And they conjure up all kinds of demons. And they pray over them and curse every bit of their music. So that everyone who's listening to that music, those demons go out. When a person begins to sing and agree with it, those demons access them. And they don't even know it. Second Corinthians three, verse twelve. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, their thoughts were blinded. They were veiled. For until this day, the same veil remains un unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ or in the anointing. That's why many believers are still veiled. Why? Because what is the Christ? It is the baptism of the Holy Spirit which removes the scales. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away when Jesus becomes your Lord, not just your Savior. And he can't become your Lord until you're filled with the Spirit. Amen. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord, there's what? Liberty. Freedom. Liberty or there's free freedom. Amen. So very powerful. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord. Now, the, these are veils of thoughts. The thoughts are veiled. They're, they're blocked. Amen? Um, also, images and dimensional realities that the power of darkness used to enslave humans in false realities. Preventing knowledge of the truth, revelation, because revelation knowledge through the filling of the Spirit of God will begin to remove the veils of deception. Right now what you're seeing through God awakening many people because of the setup that he's doing, the veil is thinning. The veil is what? Thinning. thinning. Does everybody understand that? Why? It's becoming transparent. Oh, glory. It's becoming weaker and trans, more transparent because people are awakening and becoming uh, aware now. They're making what is unseen. Because God, what's God doing? He's making what is unseen to become what? Seen. Seen. Through all the wickedness and everything that's going on. So that veil is thinning. Yeah. And it's weakening. Eventually it will be ripped and destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't wait for that, huh? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them. 
that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Who are the sons of God? Angels. Fallen angels. Amen? Now, where were these? Okay, let's go over. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is in deep flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth. Giants on the earth. In those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the what? Daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were called Nephilims. These were the mighty men who were old, men of renown. And the, loss, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Why? Because they were fallen angels off spring, off the offsprings. Now remember, Cain was an offspring known as the wicked one. His father was not Adam. His father was a serpent. So here you have Cain on the earth, and he began to produce offsprings. Does everybody get it? Those became giants also. That's why it says, and then the angels that came, and then about 200 of them in the book of Enoch, you'll read about 200 of those angels put on flesh, came into the earth, and took women for themselves. And they produced offsprings. Why? Because remember the Lord said there would be a war between the seeds. And that's why God flooded the earth to destroy all of them. It says that their evil intents were what? Continuously. Amen? Continuously. And the Lord saw that he had made man, he was sorry he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beasts and creeping things and birds of the earth, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, so they went on the ark, amen. God flooded the earth, destroyed all of the Nephilim and giants and so forth. And when those when their when their bodies died, their spirits became demons. They were disembodied spirits, and so they roamed the earth. But the problem was is not all the offsprings were giants. Some of them were beautiful men and women. And Ham married one. So. Ham's wife was a Nephilim. Came across after the flood. And if you find Ham's lineage, every one of his lineage is Ittites. Ites. Heights, kites, whatever. Ites. Nephilim. Giants. That's where Goliath came from. All the genealogy goes to all of these families that were of giants. And it all came from Ham's. Ham and his wife. Is everybody okay? Mm -hmm. So the offsprings of Eve and the serpent was because of Cain. And then the fallen angels came and the angels took on humanity all polluted generations. But both Noah and his family until Ham married a Nephilim. And the giants, the Ikes, whatever you want to call it. And that's what David, that's why David fought Goliath, didn't he? Goliath was from the lineage of Ham and that whole family. And so that's that seed that continues in war. But their whole purpose is to create a false reality to keep mankind enslaved. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. Deception. His power is what? Fear. Fear. In Matthew chapter 8, 828. Now, when Jesus had come to the other side, to the country of Gorians, 
there met him two demon possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way and suddenly they cried out saying what have we to do with you Jesus son of God have you come here to torment us before the time now that's phenomenal before the what time so they knew the time of their end does everybody understand that and these were demons that were in these dudes these two guys legions of them now a good way off from them there was a herd of many swine feeding so the demons begged Jesus saying if you cast us out permit us to go into the herd of the swine and so Jesus said to them, go. So when they had gone out, they went into the herd of the swine, and suddenly the whole herd of the swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told others, including that what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their regions. Mm -hmm. Please leave. Why? You're killing my, my cattle. You're killing my... They didn't want any more of that stuff to happen. But there's something so powerful. Remember, where did these demons come from? They came from the flood. Does everybody get it? They came from the flood because their bodies died in the flood. They were Nephilim. So Jesus reminded them where they came from. He let them go back in the swine and went to have the swine. They died and the demons booked. But it reminded them. Because they said, but Jesus really, you know, in some one way or another, you might say he tormented them. I would say, you know, all right, go on in the swine. Remember what where you came from. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They, they knew the time. That's amazing. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone who's found written in the book. What book? The book of life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. In other words, that book has been opened. End time is now. It's all being opened. And many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge shall increase. Knowledge of the dimensional reality will increase. Veiling, the veiling, like I said, was thinning and weakening. And it's going to become more and more transparent. Technology and artificial intelligence will increase to deceive. Because the powers of darkness have to use gimmicks. Yeah. They use gimmicks in everything. In James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. So they have wisdom, don't they? But it's deceptive wisdom they use. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. 
But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, there's wisdom from darkness portrays good. This wisdom portrays a good and evil. But the wisdom from above releases righteousness. There's a difference. That's why many people say, oh, I'm a good person. Why don't I mean to do this, this, and whatever? Good don't get you in heaven. Mm -hmm. Righteousness does. Yeah. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor the other shall ever be seen after them even for many successive generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. A flame burns down. These are individuals, supposedly. Sometimes, you, you gotta remember that when they wrote these things, when they had visions, they could not explain what we know now. Mm -hmm. Like tanks, flying saucers, artillery, uh, laser beams, things to that degree. These guys were seeing things in the future and they couldn't explain it. Because, what did a chariot of fire have by afterburners? I mean, think about it. They saw all kinds of things, wheels within wheels and chariots of fire, but they could only explain what they knew of their, of their knowledge at that time, amen? So when you hear about fire devours before them and behind them, a flame burns, think about it. What could it be? It could be a jet, it could be whatever. They could be shooting things in the front of them, forces of uh, uh, jet engines or whatever behind them. The land is like the guardian of the garden of Eden before them, and behind them, a desolate wilderness. So they see it ahead, but what's leaving behind is destroying it. Mm -hmm. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like that of appearance of horses, like swift steads, so they run. With a noise like chariots, over mountaintops they leap. Like the noise of flaming fire they, that devours the stubble. I don't know if you've ever been seeing these jets you know, these fire jets and whatever. And, I mean, they, they go over all these things, man, and it sounds like Whoa. Like a strong people set in military array. Before them, the people rise in pain, in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon are, grow dark. The stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Who can endure it? The Lord's army with dimensional technology. Dimensional technology. Like I said, chariots with afterburners and laser, laser beam burners. Is that a possibility? Yeah. I won't make it a definite, but it's a possibility. Look at the book of Revelation. Symbolic, but he can only explain what he saw in the language that he had for that his time. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. 
Now, brother, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of the Lord of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first, and a man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Well, who's that? Amen. See? Who, op who opposes and exalts himself above that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. So who's restraining the enemy? We are. The presence of the Holy Spirit in us, the body of Christ, is restraining the enemy. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless ones, according to the working of who? Satan. Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, and all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Is a lie a false reality? Yes. 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 That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Strong delusions. I really believe that these strong delusions are going to be exposed by demons. They're going to dress up as aliens. Mm -hmm. Hello. See, they have technology now because they can clone bodies. And they're now cloning bodies and putting demons in them yep. instead of the spirit. Does everybody understand that? With interdimensional transportations, they call UFOs. Information is now everywhere. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're talking about UFOs everywhere now. They're talking about aliens and extraterrestrials and all kinds of stuff. Why? They're now beginning to promote things that they held back for so many years. Now they're, okay, yeah, let's do it all. Testimonies of people being abducted and all kinds of stuff. Women being abducted and having, being pregnant and this and that, whatever. Amen? It's everywhere now. War, why? Because it's wars of realities. Deception, delusion, enslaving individuals in the false reality. It is happening now. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Speak, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with them, with him, those who sleep in Christ. For this we say that to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means perceive those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So those who passed away wherever they are, whether they've been cremated or not, or buried, they will rise first. You think that's going to freak out the world? Yeah, this will be his last sign to them. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together, with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Why? Because he will not touch the earth. <coughs> he will meet him in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. Caught up. The bride will be caught up. You know who else was caught up? The two witnesses will be caught up. Jesus was caught up. Amen? When he rose, after he rose from the dead and hung out for 40 days and then he was caught up. 
We know right now that artificial intelligence is trying to imitate the things of God. Mm -hmm. So we must be very careful and sensitive because that great delusion, I wouldn't be surprised if people start seeing the technology, the interdimensional technology coming. Remember, Satan's going to portray that he's God. Once we're out of the way, what's he going to do? He's going to deceive more and more people like crazy. He's going to use artificial intelligence known as the beast. Revelation 13. Verse 1. There's the beast of the sea and the beast of the land. Well, you know what? You did? There are most of their places of dwelling is in the seas and under the ground. Amen. That's where they dwell. And they also dwell in the second dimensional reality. The second, what we call the second heaven. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the water. Sea. sea. Well, a beast is a representation of the Antichrist. In other words, a fallen angel. Which represents something demonic, but it could also be artificial intelligence or artificially something that's used out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head horns, ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne. A great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the earth, all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months, which is what? Three and a half years. Part of tribulation, isn't it? That's the final part. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle. What's his tabernacle? The eternal board, the tabernacle of God, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So these people never made it to the second chamber. If anyone has an ear, let them hear he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authorities of the first beast in his first presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword in heaven. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. To give breath means it was already it was just artificial, artificial intelligence, and then he caused it to become alive, but it really wasn't alive. It was taken possession by a demon. Mm -hmm. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So no one who anyone refusing to worship the beast, the artificial intelligence, demon possessed artificial intelligence, will be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads, so that they that no one may buy or sell except 
one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Again, the beast of the sea and the beast of the land, depths of the sea and the depths of the sea, dwell in places of their headquarters. The great deception, the great delusion, is going to become even more and more revealed. Why? Because the veil is thinning and weakening. People are waking up. It's becoming more and more transparent. People are beginning to see the evilness and wickedness and the deceptions. I mean, when, when Biden speaks, most people laugh. Yeah. He's an idiot. Mm -hmm. He's not even human. I don't know what he is. He's a Nephilim, Nephilim, whatever. But anyways, the whole, uh, uh, they lie daily. The whole place is nothing but demonic filled. When we talked about, um, they were celebrating, people were celebrating Easter, they were celebrating Transgender Day. That ought to tell people right then and there what's going on. But we are in an end time arena that we must maintain awakeness. We can't fall asleep now. We must continue to battle spiritually. Know that things are about to get crazy. Regardless of what, we're going to be blessed. We're protected. And now we're covered by the blood and sealed by the Holy Spirit. So we got no worries. Amen. Just stay out of the outer court and stay in the holy place, in the most holy place. And temptation will be much less. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. Protect that word that's been released to us with the blood of Jesus. And let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And bring to remembrance, Lord, so we are not deceived. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.